But until you understand adoption and that you've been adopted into the family of God with a new name, new identity, a new nature, it's you're still going to experience fear until you come to a place. That's the mature love that First John chapter four. That love about. of a father. And what does it say about that? It casts out all fear because fear has torment. Fear has torment. And there's people right now that are living with torment. Yeah. Welcome to our Lifted Up podcast. We're so excited that you're joining us for today's episode. My name is Pastor Pam. I'm one of the pastors here at New Beginnings, and I'm here with our lead pastor, Pastor Joe, and we are super excited about today's podcast. This is a place, our Lifted Up podcast is a place where we have conversations about the Word of God. Mm. And we feel like our heart is to add value to you. And the best way we can do that is to deposit the Word of God in your life because we know that the Word of God is what's gonna bring change, what's gonna bring transformation, and what's really gonna lift you up, and that's the heart of everything that we're doing here. So today's topic is something Pastor and I are super excited about, right, Pastor? Not only are super excited, but very much acquainted with in years gone by. Absolutely. Um, Our topic is living free of fear. And so we really chose this topic and why we're talking about it is because there's so many messages that we get in today's world. Oh, absolutely. On fear. Everything comes to really bring fear. We see it on the news. We hear it through. We see through circumstances. We hear it everywhere we are. And that those messages of fear just come to really inundate us. And the reason why this is so strong on our heart, like Pastor said, we're we've been acquainted with this. But there's no emotion that makes us feel as vulnerable as fear. Fear will limit our lives. It will cause our lives to just be limited, bring, uh, cause it to grow smaller, really um, hinder us from walking in our gifts and walking out our well, purpose. If you think about it, and fear is a, is a tool of the enemy <clears throat> to bring manipulation. Fear, uh, yeah. fear is used to manipulate people. It's used to manipulate masses. It's used to manipulate, even in relationships, sometimes people will use fear to manipulate the other yeah. person to do what they what that individual wants them to do. We see that a lot in, in abusive relationships, yeah. <clears throat> where sometimes the person who's being abused is literally afraid to leave because they've been so manipulated mm-hmm. to think a certain way to need the individual. They've been convinced that they can't live without that yeah. person. It's all fear, and we see that it goes way back in the beginning, yeah. way back in the beginning. Um, I've, I've taught on this so many times over the years, um, I know you, you're very familiar with this, in Genesis chapter 3, when sin comes into the world and uh, the first effect that it has on mankind is fear. Yeah. We talked about this. Imagine what Adam and Eve must have felt like. They'd never experienced the emotion of fear before. Yeah. They've never had this. They've been secure. They were so secure in their relationship with God. They were so so secure in that relationship with their creator, their father. And then all of a sudden, bam, this thing comes out of left field. They fall, they sin, they turn against God. They're tricked into turning against God. And the first effect it has on them is fear. Imagine how paralyzing that must have been for them. They lived in such an innocent state. And so some of us, you know, we're raised from the time that we're children. um, And for good or for bad reasons, sometimes fear is instilled in us. Yeah. We're taught to fear certain things. Mm-hmm. And some of it is necessary. Don't cross the street because you're going to get hit by a car. Yeah. Uh, don't put your hand on the stove because you're going to get burned. We understand that. But then well, with, with that, along with that, comes that natural tendency to fear and to, and to worry. <clears throat> so we see here, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, fear caused them to run. Fear mm-hmm. caused them to hide. To hide, yeah. And someday, you know, obviously when we get to heaven, we can kind of get a firsthand account of like, what did, what did that feel like when yeah. Adam realized, man, I really messed up here. And now he's intimidated. He's afraid to face the very one who created him, the one who the day before he felt secure with. So um, fear is a tremendous tool of the enemy. Mm-hmm. It definitely comes in. It wasn't God's plan. Yeah. There's never been God's, never plan. God's plan. And I think that's sure. why, you know, you know, you've studied this out a, a lot also. That's why there is, we're told by com- Bible commentators, there's 300, at least 365 yeah. fear knots. Why? Because it was never his idea for us to fear. Yeah. We're supposed to hold him in awe. We're supposed, you know, the scriptures talk about us having the fear of the Lord, but it's not a fear of being destroyed or a fear that causes intimidation. It's a fear that causes awe or wonder or um, uh, attracts us to God. Yeah. So. 
I think what you said is so important when you said it caused them to turn from the one who created them. Exactly. And I think that that, it makes me think of um, Hebrews chapter four, where we, we hear that we're to go into the uh, throne of grace with boldness, with boldness. With boldness. So we're, there's no intimidation. There's no turning yeah, from you God. You can't there's have no, boldness with the presence of fear. If fear is there, how are you going to have boldness? How do you face God, you know? Yeah. and. When we fear, our, our first thing, like you said, is to cover ourselves, to turn. But um, one of the main things, and you also brought out the 365 days of fear, it's so interesting to say, when he tells us to fear not, he says, fear not because I am with, with you. you. And <clears throat> that presence of God with us is really one of the big things. I know both of us have struggled right. with fear in the past. Right. And that was one of the things that really helped me is um, to recognize that I'm connected to God. Right. And in that in the garden, they still had that connection with God, but they turned. Right. And that's what brought fear, that disconnection from Not God. Not only disconnection, but that that sense of instability. Yes. Yeah, you know, where he is, there's liberty. Mm -hmm. Where the presence that's of good. the Lord is liberty. Yeah. Where the presence of the Lord is there's security, there's stability. We know he loves us. We know he's for us. He's not against yeah. us. And if, like it says in Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. It doesn't matter who's against us. But when we allow fear to come in, um, we start entertaining the idea that maybe he's not going to be with me this time. Maybe yeah. okay, he was with me before. He walked me through that incident or that situation, but the enemy always comes and go. Well, yeah, that was last time, but you know, not this time because you did this or you did that or you haven't been perfect or you sinned or you you didn't act kind to this person, whatever. And so the enemy's always looking for a foothold in our life, and he usually starts out with some type of an accusation that brings fear. Yeah. And you said that it made me think of, I think something I written, wrote in my notes and I just wrote it down as you said that is fear will always come, you said, to bring instability. Mm -hmm. It comes to bring torment. We know in um, in 1 John 4.18, right. it says there's no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of the doors and expels every trace of terror. Fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And we know that one of the... Um, Translation says dread or dread, torment. Right. And fear, Which anyone that's had anxiety attacks or panic attacks, yeah. that's what you have. You experience yes. dread. You experience dread. You experience like, man, I don't even want to know if I want to. You know, there's a scripture in the Old Testament. I think it's in Deuteronomy or Exodus that, that, that fear would cause them to say at nighttime, I wish it was morning. And wow. the morning would say, I wish it was nighttime. There's instability. There's fear. There's worry. There's anxiety. There's just stress it causes tremendous amount of stress in people's yeah. lives and we know we know the majority of the people that are listening to us right now and watching us have probably had some personal experience with fear yeah paralyzing and, and fear. if and if you have mm. you're very much in the right place today oh to, yeah definitely to be hearing yeah. you know, talking about this if any of this is resonating right. with you right you're in the right place today uh pastor you said that and it makes me think about how fear does come to obstruct our view of god and you had mentioned earlier the scripture in 2 Timothy 1.6, mm -hmm. um, that uh, the scripture says, this is why I would remind you to stir up. Paul is speaking to Timothy mm -hmm. here, a young pastor who mm -hmm. obviously he was dealing with a lot of fear. Uh, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Intimidation? Yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, you know, here he is. You're talking about Timothy's uh, life. I mean, uh, he doesn't have, uh, at this point in his life, he doesn't have a long track record with, with Paul. He comes from a family, if I remember correctly, his mother was was a Hebrew Jewish, yeah. but his father was a Greek, so we've got a clash of cultures there. Obviously, that's true because his name is not a Hebrew name, it's a Greek name. And so there could have been dysfunction in the family, it could have been infighting in the family, it could have been... Plus, he's a young man when he takes mm -hmm. over this church that was established. And so anybody in the ministry, I mean, my God, you're first when you first get into the ministry, yeah. it's extremely intimidating. A lot of fear. I remember the... the anxiety attacks I would have to fight off when we first started yeah. the church you know um, so yeah so Timothy's experience with this and it's funny because Paul has to keep writing to him about stir yourself up yeah. be courageous be bold uh, don't let the people scare you and, and, and obviously he's having a struggle otherwise there'd be no reason for Paul to write these letters to him yeah. but he overcomes he overcomes yeah. and so it's very appropriate that Paul would write that to Timothy that God's not given us a spirit of fear, yeah. but a power and love and a sound sound mind. There's yeah. a stability. Yeah, the, yeah there's that's a stability, security, yeah. the sound mind. 
Um, and, you know, people have taught over years, well, well that he's talking about a spirit and entity. I don't think he's talking about that. I think if you, if you enter to, I mean, any spirit that comes from the enemy is going to try to bring mm-hmm. fear. But he's talking about an attitude. Yeah. Or I would look this way, what the Holy Spirit was speaking through Paul to Timothy to say, hey, listen, you weren't created with this as part of your equipment. Yeah, it's not part of this. This did not yeah. come from God. This is not your makeup. Yeah. You've not been given a spirit of fear. Yeah. But of power and love and a sound yeah. mind. I mean, it's right there. That's the whole package. I yeah. mean, that's really helped so many people throughout the years. But it's like anything else. You have to believe it. You've got to receive it yeah. as if that's coming from God. Yeah. And you've got to walk in it. Yeah. And sometimes it's a battle. Yeah. And I I heard someone say this one time. It was a quote um, in a book that I had read in regards to that scripture. And he said, fear will always come to short circuit love Mm. and power. But love and power will short circuit fear if we plug into that love and power. And that's where the soundness of mind comes. Yes, absolutely. That's good. Isn't that good? That's really good. I love that. Um, Yeah. And it'll come because it will. It will come to short circuit. Uh, love and power, and it's going to come to obstruct our view of God and His yeah, promises. Yeah, I mean, look at Gideon in the Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, obviously God had a great plan for this man's life, but he's grown up in a family where uh, obviously he's not valued. Uh, his his um, um, He immediately goes into this excuse when the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, hey, I'm going to use yeah. you to deliver Israel. And he's like, me? I'm like, I'm like the least of my family, and my family yeah. is the least of the clans and the tribes of Israel. We're like we're nobodies, you know. You know the whole story. Yeah. You know, he's 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 uh, threshing wheat in a yeah. in a wine press, which is like the complete, uh, you know, that equation. You know, if you do the same thing, you're always going to get the same results. Yeah. And here he's doing this thing as as, a, and we know he's doing it out of cowardice. He's trying to hide from, I believe, it was the Midianites. So. Just by virtue of his actions, it's telling us this is a guy who's gripped with fear. This is a guy who has no self-confidence, yeah. no stability. There's no sound, soundness of mind, yeah. and so there's no power. And so he's hiding in the you know in a wine press. It's pretty far into our culture, but a wine press by nature has walls around it to contain the grapes. Yeah. So when you're squashing them and stuff, it's not splashing all over the place. It's collecting the juice. But threshing has to take place on a floor where there's it's open so that the wind comes by and as you're tossing the wheat up in the air the wind will take the husk the part that's yeah. inedible and take it away well how are you going to get that process to work when you have walls that are stopping the the wind from coming through and affecting the wheat yeah so we see that here's instability yeah. almost to the point of insanity anybody walking by him that day could have said this guy's crazy he's never going to succeed in what he's doing but the fear that he had, the worry, the concern that he's going to attract the attention of their enemies caused him to do something that was just in vain. It's not going to be productive. And that's what the enemy is after. And that's why I know for a very good part of my young life, mm-hmm. um, I know you in a very good part of your young life, it was an ineffective thing. For those that don't realize this and know this, that we're related. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Pam is my first cousin. Obviously, there's quite a bit of an age difference there. So uh, I went through this stuff uh, years before she did. Unfortunately, uh, we were raised in a kind of a family culture where fear was part of our everyday lives. Yeah. Always concerned about don't do this and don't do that. And what if this happens? Or what if that happens? And, you know, our parents would call us six times a day to make sure they were okay. And <laughs> so we had to undo all of that junk. Yeah. And um, I, I know that the Lord has used many of the scriptures um, to bring you to a place of stability and stuff. Yeah. But I remember in my life, the freedom came from the word of God. That's, I want to stop there for a second and say this. The Word of God is the agent of change in Amen, our lives. Amen, that's right. Where there's no Word, there can be no mm-hmm. change. Uh, the more we resist conforming to the Word or uh, receiving the Word, believing the Word, those areas that we don't apply the Word to are areas that, at best, you're putting the battle off into the future. Mm-hmm. But at some point in time, you're going to have to t- pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and you're going to have to do your battle. So I remember... Um, saved 37 years now um probably 36 years ago that very first year i got saved and i remember when a scripture was taught in the church that i was in and it wasn't even taught for the purpose that it was and it's in luke chapter one and i've shared this scripture with many people that have suffered from anxiety attacks and panic attacks and uh, i probably shared it with you years ago yeah i remember you sharing it even in the early days of the church several times yeah and um 
It's in Luke chapter 1, and it's the part of Luke chapter 1 that's talking about Zacharias, John the Baptist's mm -hmm. father. And so we can't go into the whole story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist <clears throat> is, is conceived supernaturally. Uh, the angel comes. I mean, they're, his father and mother were both very advanced in age. Uh, there was no natural reason why they should have been able to conceive a child. Yeah. They hadn't all those years. But an angel comes and tells him that, uh, Zechariah, you know, you're going to have a child, and you're going to name him John, and he's going to be very instrumental in the Messiah yeah. coming. And so uh, when John is born, nine months later, obviously, John is born, and um, the custom was to ask the father, what's the name of this child? Now, John, uh, Zacharias had been struck dumb. You know the story. Yeah. He doubted what the angel yeah. said. And so the angel, in order for him not to interfere, in order Zacharias not to hijack or shipwreck this miracle, this, yeah. he struck dumb. He can't talk now for the whole entire nine months yeah. of his wife's pregnancy. But on the day that he was asked, what is the name of this child? It tells us that uh, he was able to speak. And so he, he wrote on a tablet, his name was John. And as soon as he wrote John, uh, immediately the Bible tells us his mouth was open and his tongue was loosed and he spoke praising God. So we know, wow. what is he doing? He begins out of his, out of his, heart the holy spirit inspires him yeah. to prophesy to mm -hmm. just under the inspiration of the holy spirit to make this declaration of praise and glory to god but there's a key here verse 67 this is luke chapter one for those that that are watching those that are listening if you're having problems with anxiety attacks panic attacks listen to the word of god verse 67 luke chapter one now, his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything he's saying now is inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us. A horn always represents strength. In the house mm -hmm. of his servant David, <clears throat> excuse me, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. Here, here it comes. Verse 71 that we should be saved from our enemies. Well, he's Amen. not talking about people. He was talking about the enemy, the devil. That we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. It's talking about Abraham. It goes on to say here, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, listen to this now, this is so good, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. That's good. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I'll never forget when I read that I went, wait a second. It was like the whole thing just jumped off the page. That we being delivered from the hand of our enemies, I was already born again yeah. at that point. I know I've been delivered out of darkness, might serve him without fear. Now, when you look this up in the original language, mm -hmm. that word fear is a word phobia. Yeah. People, people are going to doctors, they're taking medication, yeah. they're going for counseling on a regular basis. Why? I have this phobia, I have that phobia. Yeah. I, uh, I have the fear of small places, fear of heights, uh, fear of spiders, fear of... Uh, yeah, there's, just so there's so many yeah. things. There's so many And it's this kind of phobia and that kind of phobia. Phobia, 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 phobia. The enemy has been so successful in just flooding the earth with phobia. Mm. That has limited people, has stopped people, has stopped the plan of God in people's yeah, lives. Stopped, yeah. So he said, here it is, phobia. And what does it say? That we've been delivered from the hand of our enemy. Well, who brought fear into the world? The devil. Yeah. Through sin. That we would serve him, serve God. Yeah. That was it. Honestly, if it wasn't for me being delivered by this verse of scripture, there's no way I could have served him in you ministry. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. There's no way. Yeah. I, no, there's no way. I'd probably still be home in a fetal position someplace. Yeah. That I might serve him without fear. Listen, in holiness, separated unto God, and righteousness in that place of, of being able to stand before God yeah. without guilt or condemnation, yeah. which you can't do that if you're gripped with fear. You can't, yeah. And if you don't have the sense of, oh, I've been taken by God and placed in a position. Righteousness is not something you and I earn. Yeah. We can't earn that. It's a position that we're placed in. Yeah. But being placed in that position takes you out. It separates you from what's happening to the rest of the mm -hmm. world. And the rest of the world, let's face it, right now, especially in the day we're living in, is gripped with fear. Yeah. Every every newscast, every thing you see on Facebook, everything that's coming across from the media uh, is all fear-based, all fear-based mm -hmm. to get us to do what a small group of individuals want us to do, which yeah. is pretty much inspired by the enemy. So here we are. Here's, here's the thing that I've stood on all these years, that I can serve him without mm -hmm. phobias. Amen. 
without it's good. vomiting, it's good. without stomach aches, yeah. without shaking, without having yeah. massive migraine headaches, without having to hide myself in a room for three days. Yeah. I can serve him without phobia in holiness, being separated from the way the world thinks, yeah. from the fear that grips the world, in right standing with God, and that's how I can accomplish things. Yeah. That has brought stability into my life. This is a promise that Zacharias is declaring. He's going, this is what happened here. Yeah. I've been delivered from the hand of my enemies. I don't have to fear anything any longer. And I guess Paul picks up on this idea from the same Holy Spirit. Because yeah. he said, if God's for us, who could be against yeah. us? What have I got to fear? If God is for me, who could be against yeah. me? And that's a message that we need to really, we need to hold on to ourselves. We need to make sure that the people that are watching us, anybody that we get to speak to, and I know God has used you tremendously throughout the years, yeah. tremendously, to, to minister to people that have suffered from anxiety, panic attacks, things of this nature. And it's just been a blessing to see you walk in this freedom yeah. all these years. So, Amen. Um, I know before, well, first I want to say something. You mentioned, <clears throat> I think you mentioned righteousness in there mm -hmm. too. And that is such a powerful, to really grab hold of that too, will really be something that un unwrangles fear in our life Absolutely. because when you recognize that you've been placed in a position that everything you need god has you know i think about my family if i go into when i go to my mom and dad's house you know and it's it's the same with someone that you have that good relationship right. with i don't fear that i'm going to go there and not be able to take what i want i go in the cabinets i'm like hey what's i can go in my dad's wallet and take money if i want to mm -hmm. you know and it's, it's freely given to us. And when we recognize that we've been put in that position, we won't be afraid to approach God for, mm -hmm. for the things that we need so that we're not fearful. Because sometimes, you know, I know for me when I struggled with fear, shame kind of came along with that. Mm -hmm. And I felt so Especially shameful. Especially as a Christian, because you're not supposed to feel it's this like, way. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm feeling this way. I'm a Christian. I'm not yeah. supposed to have these. I'm not supposed to be Absolutely. experiencing this. And so the enemy comes now and uses that against you to instill more fear. Yes. And you, instead of running to God, Shame will cause you, to, like to we saw in the garden, to hide. Exactly. And instead of going to God for what I need and my solutions, I would run from Him. Right. Um, right. But um, before we were doing this episode, I was going through my notes, and I was saying to Pastor that as I started to go through some notes I had from uh, you know several years back because I keep my notebook, I started to well up with tears because I thought I remember what it was like to have to soak myself in these truths. Um, to combat fear every day. Like exactly. I had to do it every day. Right. And it's amazing that, like you said, the Word of God is a vehicle of transformation because as I put myself in the Word of God, I saw that transformation. I saw those things change. And now I'm like, I don't even remember what that was like to have to live like that every day. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to pa you know, talking to Pastor before this as we were talking in right. you know, your office. Right. Um, a few of the things I wanted to share are, you know, what did that look like for me? Like you were saying, I struggled so bad with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I str I remember the memories I have, even as a little girl. Yeah. I remember from the time I was a little girl, fear was always like a companion for me in everything. It stopped me from doing so much, just like Gideon. He wanted to pull back and his exactly. life was limited exactly. and not really um, walking out the purpose. And I, f I feel like from a little girl, fear was just there and it was a pattern for me. And so some of the things um, I was sharing with Pastor was, um, you know, f there's, there's a few little things here that I wrote down. And one of them is I had a, we have to face fear when it comes. Cause one of the things we, we fear sometimes is feeling fearful. And so we feel like vulnerable, like I think about Saul in the Old Testament, how he hid behind luggage. Right. He became unglued when yeah. we feel that way. And one of the things I wanna encourage you in, if you are dealing with fear, is that you really have to face the fear. Because we think if we continue to not face the things that we're afraid of, It'll go away. it's gonna go away, it but doesn't. it's never going no, it to. It becomes more empowered. It does. So facing <clears throat> fear is really, really key. Um, when you're walking through something, I want to encourage you in that. And you want to break that story. If you're someone who is dealing with fear on a daily basis, like I was, I, I had to break that story of fear because I would wake up feeling fearful. Right. I would wake up feeling anxious. And I had to go to the words of God to remind myself that, you know what, wait a minute. God says that his peace has already been given to mm -hmm. me. 
And even if I don't have all the answers today on some of the things that I might be fearful about, I can still have peace because it's not dependent upon right, my circumstances. Because it, it's dependent upon trusting him. It's dependent upon yeah. a person, not a exactly. situation. Right. And so I, I had to learn to face fear. And I want to encourage you, if you're dealing with that, to take little steps. For me, it was taking those little steps. But those little steps become monumental. They do. In our story. They do. You know. Um, and that helps to really break that that story of fear over your mm -hmm. life, that fear that tries to keep you. So that was one of the big things. Um, the other thing is, for me, I I always would ask myself, I'm a heart person, you know that, like I'm always about the heart, like let's get to the heart of things. And so for me, one of the other pieces was also sitting and saying, okay, what's contending for your heart right now? What's fear, I would recognize mm -hmm. fear was contending for my heart. And I literally would go through the process of recognizing that I'm my heart is set apart to walk out what God desires for me exactly. to walk out. Exactly. So whatever was trying to contend, whether it was fear or shame, trying to contend over my heart to stop me from that consecration or really being faithful to what God was asking me to walk out, I had to stop myself and say, okay, let's get to the root of it. Pam, what is it that you're really struggling with right now? that's at the root of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, God would always take me to the root. A lot of times it was like, of the root for me was rejection in a lot of cases. Like, mm -hmm. well, I have to perform, I have to do well on this because if, if, if I don't rise to a level that I have an expectation of, then maybe pastor will reject me. And mm -hmm. there was such a fear for me. So there was a lot of- So there's a tie there, there's a connection to image. For me, there was. Yeah, I think in general, it just is that way. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, as much as we say we don't care what people think, we care what people think. Yeah. We care what what consequences could be mm -hmm. to a failure in our life or an inability. We just might not be, may just be God's, might not be God's will for us to do certain things. Yeah. You know, and it's not that he would ever use fear, but if we don't, if we're not supposed to do something, it's hard to tap into the equipment for that. It is. Absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, the fear always comes to bring limitation. It always does. comes to bring disconnection. It always comes to bring that, uh, like to knock the legs out from underneath yeah. you so you wouldn't be able to stand. So it's a, it's really a very hard, it is a hard issue. And it's something that you've got to get to the core of that thing. Otherwise, yeah. the tentacles will just wrap itself around you. They'll always manifest somehow. You say that. I want to share one other thing, but I want to say something on what you just shared about how it's a heart issue. It does make me think about, think about the children of Israel mm -hmm. um, way back when God said, I promise you this. He gave them a promise and he's like, I have a good land for you, but they didn't see it as a good land. They they did not see, they had a picture that was different from the picture God was right, giving them. They were, they were seeing through the eyes and the filters of fear they and were. of um, cowardice, yeah. um, which really were based on distrust of God. If they had just trusted him mm -hmm. with their whole heart, yeah. their story would be so different. It would, yeah. and it, and when you said it was a, it's a heart issue, it just really made me think of the children of Israel, and even in Hebrews three and four, how we are encouraged to look back on not to make the same mistake, not to make the same mistake. What caused them not to? It said their heart was filled with doubt, unbelief. They experienced fear. They did not mix it with faith. faith. They didn't. Ex they didn't yes. mix their experiences with faith. And faith, uh, sometimes wow. in order to walk in faith, you have That's to overcome really fear. You have to face fear. I, I believe with all my heart that yeah. the force of faith, I've taught this a number of times over the years, that God gave the force of faith, the principles of faith, the the concept of faith to us to overcome the adversity that came into our lives through sin. Yeah. You know, before sin came into the world, Adam and Eve, they had it made. They had it made. They had no concerns, no worries, yeah. nothing. Everything was peaceful. They're so oblivious of them from themselves. They're so caught up in God, so obsessed with yeah. God, so enraptured with God. They didn't even realize they were naked. They had no idea of what they didn't have. Yeah. Well, fear comes in and you start becoming very much aware of what you don't have. It's the exact, you, you disconnect from God. You're like, oh, okay, okay, I, I don't know if I can trust you with this. And so you become very much focused on yourself. Anytime we become Self conscious, inward, yeah, instead of God conscious. Instead of God conscious yeah. is a disaster. Yeah. It's a disaster, so. And Pastor, that was so good what you, what you said about faith, because God's desire is for us to walk by faith, right. to step out in faith, to take exactly. risks, to go on an adventure with Him. Yes. Even in the face of fear. And that's what he wanted for the children of Israel, but they were so focused on the giants and, and fear right, really did right. hinder them from ever walking in the purposes of God. And honestly, you know, you started out talking about this about, we started out with stability, started out with kind of like 
the knowledge of his presence in our lives brings us security. Yeah. They never developed that. The, mm. the, the children of Israel never developed that. It was always like, okay, Moses, you go talk to him. Okay, Moses, we need this, wow. we need that. They never went to him. Yeah. Like, there's a scripture, I believe, in Psalms that says that they knew, the Israelites knew his hands, but Moses knew his ways. His ways. In other words, they were taken, 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 yeah. whatever they needed, went to Moses, God provided it. But they never got to know him personally, mm -hmm. where Moses got to know him personally. Yeah. And that's why Moses was able to stand many times without fear. Yeah. So, and he's the guy who lifted up the staff and the Red Sea parted. Yeah, as you say that as, in relationship, that was the last point that I wanted to make as far as one of the things that, I mean, I struggled really bad with fear, fear in my relationships, fear. Um, there was a point that I was in my home and I didn't even, I couldn't even be around people. I had social anxiety, everything. And so it really rocked my life when I was about 18 or 17, although I dealt with fear for so many years before that. But I want to read a quote because the last thing that really, this was probably um, in 2017, I think it was, this was a turning point for me on fear. I had read a book by a man named Mark de Jesus. This is not the book, but this actually is a huge, This I did read this book as well, this was big, is I Will Not Fear by Mark de Jesus. But this, he said a quote in one of his books, um, I think it's called Breaking the Rejection Mindset. Mm -hmm. And I realized God really began to move me in the place of like you just said about Moses. Moses knew God intimately. God really began to move my heart towards understanding the fatherhood of God. And this is what, and the love of a father. This was a turning point for me completely with fear. And Mark de Jesus says this, Where, wherever there is lack of love, there's lack of security and a propensity to drivenness, to prove yourself worth and value. And fear comes in and causes us to live from an identity outside of Absolutely. God's design. Yep. Lack of any of these things brings fear and will put us on a quest of striving and looking for something to fill that void. And one of the biggest things for me is when I began to recognize this, he gave a scripture in the book um, that unpacked it, and it, Romans 8, 14, this scripture has been like such a powerful scripture. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But listen to this, you have received the spirit of adoption yeah by whom we, we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs. and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And that literally set my heart on a new journey because I literally began to posture my heart in a place of love and acceptance of the Father. As opposed to, Go like ahead. That, that quote that you read, use mm -hmm. that word propensity. Yeah. Some people might not really understand what that means. It means that you have an inclination yes. now to lean in that direction. A propensity is like a natural tendency to go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sometimes people that are raised in homes where there's alcoholics for parents, there's a propensity that the children are going to fall in that same direction. There's a, uh, an inclination. Mm -hmm. There's a natural expectation. Well, wherever fear is allowed to be entrenched, there's going to be that. I'm going to, I have to hide. I have to create a fake image. Mm -hmm. For me, for me personally, I was so sick and tired. One of the reasons that made me really search for God yeah. was I was so sick and tired of living a double life, living this image on the mm -hmm. outside of what people would think I was, and then suffering on the inside from all the insecurities and the fear and the anxiety mm -hmm. and just the general just feeling of panic. It, got, it gets so tiring. That, and I'm, I know there's people that know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. It gets so tiring. It's hard enough living one life mm -hmm. when you've got to try to live a double life. It's even harder yet. But what I like about that is it talks about, uh, could you read that quote again where it talked about maturity? Where there is lack of love, there's lack <clears throat> of security and a propensity to drivenness to prove yourself worth and value. And fear comes in and causes us to live from an identity outside of God's design. Lack of any of these things brings fear and will put us on a quest of striving and looking for anything to fill that void. Anything to fill that void. Okay, so so that is not matured love. Love, mm -hmm. we have to mature in the love of God. We know, yeah, I know God loves me. That's, I know God loves me. But you mature in the things of God. That's what that scripture you read before in First John. Yeah, First John 418. 418 yeah. is talking about yeah. perfect love. Well, we know from past studies that the word perfect in the original language mm. is the word mature. Yeah. You season into love. Okay? So 
it's very apparent that the Israelites never got to that place of maturing in the things of mm -hmm. love. They never grew in their relationship with him. Yeah. When a Christian is born again, the very first thing they should concentrate on, so I always tell people, go read the Gospel of John. Go read the Gospel yeah, of John. Good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, why? Because the Gospel of John talks, it sets the stage for knowing the love of God, mm -hmm. for knowing Jesus in, in all of his, his love, his mm -hmm. compassion. And then John follows it up when he writes his epistles years and years later. You know, most of those epistles, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost 100% sure, those epistles were written after he came off of Patmos. After he had that horrible experience of being oh. exiled in the middle of this little rock in the Mediterranean Ocean, he comes back and then writes these epistles. He's writing from a whole different perspective than he did before. Wow. Okay, <clears throat> so that love has to mature. When we're immature, we have instability. That's good, that's when true. When we're immature, we have insecurity. When we're immature, we have that, we live our lives with, with walls around us. We mm -hmm. live our lives with masks on, with a particular image that we wanna portray. We want people to see us a certain way. Mm -hmm. But when love is matured, you can get rid of the walls, you can get rid yeah. of the masks, you get rid yeah. of the disguises. You're not you're not projecting yourself as something that you're really mm -hmm. not on the inside. That's where the freedom comes from. That's where the freedom That's comes really from. Good. It's that maturing in the in the love of God. So Yeah, the love of God, um I, I know for, for me personally too, it reminded me that I was protected, that I was accepted that I was connected to him, that I had mm -hmm. a place of belonging. And because we all really look for those things. Absolutely. And um, it's ingrained in us. And w I was, I was, I was able to finally rest. Um, I, I, st I began to start out my day to say, I don't need anything today to earn love mm -hmm. from anyone, including mm -hmm. God to be accepted. And when you live from that place for me, it became, I finally was able to rest. Cause like you said before, it's tiring and I wore myself out trying to, um, always trying to strive instead of resting. And when we live from a place of rest, we can follow God. And when we live from a place of rest, so I can, clearer. because, you know, we, and the other thing, um, and I'll say this, and um, but is, you know, I'm, we're reminded too, that the greatest commandment is to love. And if, when, until we really, really taken hold of the love of God, and recognize what it's like to be loved. I can't pour that out no, on can't. someone else, that love onto someone else. Um, but you know, all of it rests on, and again, Paul brings it out in that scripture in Romans 8, okay? We talk about stability, talk yeah. about maturity, talk about security, mm -hmm. all of these things. What better concept to introduce there than adoption? Yeah. Because yeah. what happens, when an orphan, for the most part, an orphan is gonna have Insecurities, yeah, instability. Where am I going to live? Will I have a bed to sleep in? Who's going to take care of me? Is somebody going to get me clothes? Uh, what, what's going to happen to me? Uh, my heart mm -hmm. aches for for children that that are in homes like that. Yeah. And so, what does Paul use? He uses this concept of adoption. Now, yeah. what does adoption bring to an orphan? It brings security. It brings stability. Yeah. It brings that sense of belonging. Yeah. I'm it part brings of a that family. Yeah, I'm part of a family. I'm not on my own. I'm in this. I have people that are watching out for me. I have people that are taking care of me. I don't have to worry about any more being abused by mm -hmm. an individual. I don't have to fear for my life. That brings so much security. And so Paul introduces that uh, as he's writing this letter to yeah. the Romans because he knew that culture in Rome I love this. was very different. We talked about this yeah, just this is before. Exciting, yeah. That the culture in Rome as it pertains to adoption was extremely different than the Jewish culture when it comes to adoption, yeah. okay? Uh, the Roman uh, concept of adoption was more legal, okay? You literally, uh, I told you the story before about this movie from years ago. Um, Ben-Hur, right? Ben-Hur, yeah. awesome. If nobody's ever seen that movie, go on your classic whatever, try to yeah. get it, try to, whatever you can do to fight the original one, not the updated one, that was, the original one with Charlton Heston. Um, and it, it always has a soft spot in my heart because there's a story of our grandparents. Okay, we share the same grandparents, okay? Yeah. When I was a little kid, all right, um, Ben-Hur came, I was only maybe four or five years old when that movie came out. And Grandpa and uh, our grandmother took me to the movies 
to go see Ben Hur. I'm oh, five years old. Oh, so they old. took you to see five it years, well. No, it didn't go well. Oh, I was five years old, and we're sitting there, and I'll never forget this. It was like it was yesterday, even though it was only four or five years old. I remember this like they couldn't. We couldn't stay because in the beginning of that movie comes this booming voice and it's supposed to be God speaking. Okay. Well, that freaked me out so much. It caused such fear. Oh, wow. They had to take me home. <laughs> I was literally having a like a, a, a like a fear attack. Oh, my God. They had to take me home so they couldn't watch a movie. So I always remember that movie because I always remember them telling the story about how I ruined their time to go see Ben Hur. So when you watch this movie yeah. and I can't go through the whole thing, it would take too long. Basically, what happens is there's an individual, Charlton Heston portrays this character Judah Ben Hur. Okay, Judah, son of her, yeah. who is one of comes from one of the wealthiest families in Jerusalem. Very well known. He's, he's in, you know, his family's in with all the politicians, with all the mm -hmm. religious leaders, with the Roman officials. And Judah Ben Hur, um, through a series of unfortunate events, ends up in prison. His mother is in prison, his sister's in prison for what seemed to be uh, an assassination attempt on a Roman official. It wasn't. It was a complete accident. A piece of masonry falls off of uh, their house as this, as these germ, these uh, generals, these Roman officials are in a procession through Jerusalem, coming to kind of like take control. This piece of masonry falls down, and it seems like it was unintentionally. It was not. But a, an enemy of Judah Ben Harris seizes the opportunity to use this as an excuse to put him in prison. Well, from prison, he ends up. <clears throat> on the detail of slaves that are on one of the Roman ships. Mm -hmm. Now, Roman ships were powered by slave power. You had ro ro people with, tied to oars, chained at the bottom of the ship. Long story short, I, Roman, the, the Romans found themselves at war mm -hmm. with particular other navy yeah. in the Mediterranean. So there's a battle that goes on. And Judah Ben-Hur, he's chained to these oars, chained to his seat. The ship is attacked. All hell breaks loose. The ship is is sinking. He gets his freedom through a supernatural situation that takes place. I don't want to spoil the whole movie. And he <laughs> finds himself on a piece of the of the boat, and near him is the commander of the navy representing the Romans. And Judah Ben Hur rescues this man, although he could have killed him because this is the man who's keeping him enslaved. He saves his life, he keeps him alive. Yeah. They they obviously float somewhere and eventually end up being rescued. And this general, this Roman general, out of gratitude for Judah ben Hur's kindness to him, adopts him. And literally, he now becomes the heir. That's why Paul's using that language. He becomes the heir. Well, what does an heir mean? In other words, everything that that person wow. has, yeah. everything they yeah. work for, everything they inherited throughout the generations, now becomes the property of the person who's been adopted. Yeah. Their name changes, their status changes. So then Judah ben Hur goes back to Jerusalem. Now he's a free man, but when he's introduced into Jerusalem, the court, he's introduced under his Roman name. And it's a complete surprise to everyone that's there. Name. And I won't say, he has a yeah. whole new name. He's carrying a ring with the seal wow. of the family of this German, uh, excuse me, I keep saying German, this Roman general mm -hmm. who was recognized all over the empire. So now he goes from being a slave in the bottom of a ship. Well, wow. it's good. he goes from being part of a royal family, falls, just like Adam. We're born mm -hmm. royalty, but we fell and we become slaves. Wow. And then from that slave ship, through supernatural circumstance, he gets lifted up and raised up and elevated into the position of where he's carrying the name of one of the most powerful men wow. in the Roman Empire. It's a complete story of redemption, but that is the thought behind there. Yeah. Roman adoption was much more um, a legal thing. Mm -hmm. a, you can never question this. Once that adoption has taken place, in fact, yeah. in the movie, they have this big party, and this Roman official introduces Judah Ben Hur as his son. And he's now dressing different. He's carrying yeah. the seal of the family. He's complete. From that point on, his identity is completely different. Yeah. So, whatever fear he was experiencing in the bottom of the slave ship, he's never experiencing anymore. Yeah. He is a completely new identity. And then as it pertains to us, we are new creations in Christ. We've been adopted That's good. by our Father. We are heirs now, heirs heirs to the kingdom of God, joint heirs with Christ. Yeah. And it's like we've been taken out of that position of insecurity and stability, uncertainty, and brought into that place of right standing with yeah. God, that place of righteousness. And like Paul says, if God be for me, who can be yeah. against me?
We go from slave to sunship. And that's sonship. really powerful. And see, the sonship is where our security is. Yeah, that, it's not even so yeah. much, well, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. No, no, that's only part of it. That's your introduction yeah. to the adoption process. Yeah. But until you understand adoption and that you've been adopted into the family of God with a new name, a new identity, a new nature, it's you're still going to experience fear until you come to the place. That's the mature love that First John chapter 4 is talking about. That love of a father. And what does it say about that? It casts out mm -hmm. all fear. Fear, because fear has torment. Fear has torment. And there's people right now that are living with torment. Yeah. Because of insecurities, because yeah. of fear. Now, sometimes it's a matter of trauma. Some people have been traumatized yeah. and they end up living in fear. Yeah. And so we just we just pray that God opens their eyes to the word, that the mm -hmm. word speaks to them and brings them to that place of freedom. Yeah. And, and pray that anyone <clears throat> who, you know, um, has an image of a father that has been a marred image that mm -hmm. the image of god as good father right. the image of god as right. perfect father as a father that does provide your needs and, and that can only come from him and that can because only every come other from him. every other father on earth is flawed yeah is flawed yeah some to me more than others but there's definitely flawed yeah i remember um i'll share this and then i'll end um but i remember there's i forget his name he played for the ravens he was a, he a football player he's mm -hmm. retired now but he did not have a father. His father left him and abandoned him when he was younger. And he said he was on a quest his whole life um, to just prove he was something because he didn't have a father. And he said, Do you have, he said, when I had a child, he said, I would sit in the stands when they would play sports. And he said, I would look back and think when I was a kid and I was playing football, he said, there was no father in the stands to say, hey, you did you did a great did job good. and he right. said something about having the affirmation of a father and the affirmate knowing you're affirmed by your father uh changes everything for you and so we want to live from that place mm. you know i remember hearing his story and it was like wow he's right but we are been affirmed whether you have not had a good father on this earth um because like you said no father's perfect right our heavenly father is perfect and um i pray and we pray that he would Re, redo or give you a new image mm -hmm. of a good father. Because At least make you live, aware of it. We right? live from that place. Absolutely. All security is going to come from that place of really Definitely. knowing God is your father. And our effectiveness to even love others, our effective, our ability to be able to yeah. love others, yeah. our ability to be able to instill um, confidence in other people, to affirm them, has got to come from the Word of God. It can't yeah. come from our human relationship. That's good. It's got to come from the Word. The yeah. Word of God is perfect. The Word of God brings us strength. The Word of God is the one that establishes who we really are, our identity. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, identity is probably the biggest piece. And um, the biggest turning point for me yeah. was knowing God as Father. Absolutely. That was the you biggest know, We could take it to a whole new level. I know we're, we, we need to wrap this up. Yeah. But yeah. we could take it to a whole new level because Jesus, when he was on the earth, mm. he affirmed. He brought security to the disciples. You remember, and, and they should have known that. He, he expected them to receive that security. You remember when they're rolling the boat, they're going across the, the lake and the storm yeah. comes. He's asleep. They accuse him of not caring. And he yeah. wakes up and goes, what is it with you? Where's your faith? What are you so yeah. fearful for? I'm here. Just my presence should have brought you security and stability. So so now they come, you know, they come out of that scenario and they're intact and... But then later on, he introduces them to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. orphans. Well, if he would have left and they didn't have a sense of his presence, wow. what did they have felt like? They would have felt like orphans. He said, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. Yeah. I'm going to send, my father's going to send another one just like well, me, that's good. but different. And that's why the Christians that have a more closer, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit are less likely to experience insecurity. That's good. Uh, uh, a lack of affirmation. Yeah. They're less likely to experience fear. Mm -hmm. And even if it does come, you know how to get rid of it right away because you know you have the Holy Spirit, as it says in that same chapter yeah. in Romans chapter 8, who will come and take hold together with us yeah, against really because we know the Holy Spirit's with yeah. us. So you could just follow right through the scriptures and see that it's all about maturing in our relationship with God. I just want to say one more thing before we close. It's so funny because when you share something like, oh my gosh, wow, you know, you see and hear things. Yeah. But even Jesus needed to be affirmed by his father. Absolutely. Even Jesus needed that 
this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. He had to hear it. He had to know who he was. It affirmed his identity. This is my son who I'm well pleased. That affirmed his identity. Absolutely. And we need to hear that. And the place that we hear it is from the scripture. Absolutely. We need to know this yeah. as our foundation. Yeah. If you don't have that as your foundation, right. then ne- right. nothing, you will never really truly step and out honestly, you, in you faith. come to the place where you put the human relationships in their category. Mm-hmm. And this is where the problem comes. So many, so many people want to receive what they need to receive from God from a human relationship. And it's impossible. Yeah, It's impossible. You just have to come to the conclusion that everyone's flawed. Uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the yeah. glory of God. We all have limitations. So don't try to receive from an individual what you have to receive from, from God, God, what you should receive from God, because he's not going to disappoint. He is capable of providing all of our needs. And that's not talking about just material mm-hmm. things. God is capable of providing us with that sense of belonging. God's capable of providing us with that sense of, uh, I can accomplish things. I can do yeah. all things through Christ yeah. who strengthens me. There's not another individual that can instill that in you. Mm-hmm. So our eyes have got to be upon him. Yeah. So this has been good. It's been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we close, I do want to say, if you never have asked Jesus into your life, we're talking about the fatherhood of God Mm -hmm. and you are, you would fall into, you would fall into living life as an orphan right now because God is not, has, you have not asked him to be your father. And um, I would love the opportunity to just share with you and let you know that God wants to be part of your life, his presence to be part of your life. So if you, whether you've had a father, a good or bad relationship with your father, right. you're still missing a big piece of your identity um, in God being your father. I contact us. Yeah. Just contact us. Yeah. And we'll, 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 we'll love the opportunity you. to pray with yeah, you. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Either come and see us in person or contact us on the phone. Contact us through Facebook. We'll, we'll establish that relationship. Amen. Amen. This has been great. Thank you so Amen. much. Been awesome. Amen.